Hey, this is Tom and I am, as you can tell, out in the woods. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about why I'm here, what I'm doing, what's the point of all this and how it impacts you. So if you're interested, stick around. This is different than my usual videos. I'm not gonna go into a teaching or anything other than to say like, what I'm doing and why it's important to me. So hope this is enjoyable to you. All right, so I'm driving north from Atlanta. I'm heading up into the North Georgia mountains for a week. And my goal with this trip is really to focus on writing a book. My goal that I set for 2024 was to publish a book in April. And so far I've written the outline and recognizing that I have a lot of work to do to get this book to actually come to fruition. I've been setting aside time in the morning to work on the book, but I found that it's just not enough time to really dive into focusing on just writing the book. And it's because it's a really deep work project. It's really something that's gonna take a lot of time and focus on scripting out the outline. And then once I break it down into chunks that are a little bit more manageable, I can do smaller writing sessions. But I found that I really need the time to kind of get away from everything, from work, from family, from all of the distractions that are in our day-to-day -day lives so that I can just put all of the book in my head and think about it holistically and write that out as an outline with some more detail than just a high level outline. And then what I wanna do is turn that into a framework of tasks that I can manage a little bit more easily. Like each chapter has a specific goal, but I'm at the point where I still need to understand what the overall purpose and goal of the book is. So I'm thinking about this as a project where I need to spend a lot of time up front, just really heads down on strategy of the book and the overall shape of the book. And then once I get to a point where a little more comfortable what the book is and what I wanna say in each portion, then I can kind of go into these two and three hour chunks of time to write a chapter or a portion of a chapter or do research or whatever. But like right now in the beginning, it's overwhelming. And, you know, I've done a really good job of writing an outline, but the outline is just that it's an outline. And I need one layer deeper than the outline, kind of like a rough first draft or somewhere between an outline and a first draft is what I'm trying to accomplish this week. It'd be awesome if I can accomplish a rough draft. I'd be thrilled if I can write the book this week, but I'm not sure that's actually possible. So I don't know, I've never done this before. I've never written a book, but here's the thing. I'm learning how to do things I've never thought that I could do. And it's because I'm allowing myself the opportunity to just try it and fail possibly. Like so far the month of January, I have failed at writing a book and that's okay because I've learned a lot of ways to not write a book. Like chunking it out two hours a day, five days a week actually isn't the way you start writing a book, or at least it's not the way that I start writing a book. Apparently the way I start writing a book is to go spend a week in a cabin alone and focus on the book. And then with that focus, then comes the thicker outline that will give me what I need in order to write the rest of the book itself. So. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to get disconnected from the business, from YouTube, from Instagram, and you know, we'll see how it goes. Like, you know, the rest of the team is managing things and they say they got it under control. And so I have to believe them. So we'll see how things go. So as I'm driving along here on the way up to the cabin, I'm thinking a lot about how important it is to focus on the important things, not just the urgent things. And this is something that a lot of my clients are challenged with, learning to discern things that are important from urgent and focusing on the important versus the urgent. What do I mean? It means every day when you open up your inbox or turn on your phone, people will bombard you with urgent messages, urgent requests, things that they need that you can fulfill. And if you let yourself, you will fulfill hundreds of tasks every day. But when you do that every day, day in and day out, you're basically letting other people dictate what it is that you focus on. And when you do that, you have no control over your calendar. You are basically at the mercy of what everyone else wants and needs. And while that's truly being a valuable team player, 
doesn't let you work at your highest, best version of yourself. That version of yourself that can think strategically is the version that actually adds more value. So during the week, I bookmark two hours a day for content creation, and I can create things like my YouTube videos, my Instagram reels, content for the course, my content for the classes. But the challenge is I wasn't able to dive into the book because I would be able to concentrate for 40 minutes at a time, 50 minutes at a time, and then invariably somebody would ping me or I would feel the need to check my email or Nicole would come by and ask a question. And anytime that I tried to dive deep into the book, I just found myself unable to really focus on it. Now, the book is very important to me. There's a lot of reasons why this book is very important, not the least of which is, I think it's a fantastic medium to share the concepts that we have here in Vertical Motion to a larger audience. And I really want to write this book. It's something that I thought about when I was in the hospital fighting leukemia, one of the thoughts that came to my mind was that I wanna write a book, I wanna give a TED talk. And so to do those things, I really have to focus on the book. I have to really be locked in and get at least the rough draft done. And if I can't do that, then I'm never gonna finish. So right now what I'm doing is I am prioritizing the important over the urgent. Urgent is everything I do day to day in the business. The important is writing this book because the book changes the structure of our business. So. I'm making a very difficult decision to basically cut myself off from my own business for a week. Now I've prepared my clients, I've prepared my team, I've made all of the arrangements for this, but now I'm the one that actually has to shut up and do my job. That means I have to go to this cabin and resist the temptation to connect to Wi-Fi and just focus for once. And if I can do that, I think I can get quite a bit done with this book. And I'm telling you all of this because it's important for executives to understand when to focus on important things over urgent things. There will always be urgent things that need your attention, but there are also always going to be important things that you should do that you keep putting off. And if you put things off indefinitely, they'll never get done. And you'll wonder where did all the time go and why didn't I do those things that I said I would. So. I don't want that to happen with this book. I've made a goal of launching this book in April and I'm putting that out there publicly because I wanna hold myself accountable to those goals. So that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm writing this book. That's why I'm taking this week, going to a cabin and hopefully learning a whole lot about what it takes to actually write a book. I gotta tell you, I love being up here. It's been a while since I've been up this way. I really love the North Georgia mountains. Last year, after chemo, after my last round of chemo, started to recover and I started to, okay, well, I need to go back to work. What is my life gonna be like? I had become this new version of myself, but my previous company was expecting me to be this old version of myself when I came back after six months. And I kind of needed to integrate those two versions of myself into one. So I went to a cabin up in the North Georgia mountains, up where we're going now, and spent a week and read a lot of books. I read Ikigai, I read The Untethered Soul, I read some other books around just the theory of what humanity is and what, you know, who I am as a person was basically the question I was trying to ask. And if you're familiar with my program, the Executive Career Accelerator, you know that module one, or the very first part of the program, is basically self-discovery. It's a compass and a mirror to figure out who you are and who you wanna be. Well, I went through that in a cabin a year ago, and I went up to this cabin alone for five or six days, I think I thought there were six days, and that's when I decided to actually create vertical motion in that cabin, I kind of figured out what I wanted to offer, what a course would look like, what the meat and potatoes of the program actually were. Because up until that point, I had been just coaching people one-to-one -one in an ad hoc kind of way where, you know, basically I was teaching them for eight weeks and each week I would create the course before I would teach it to them. I had an outline and I created the course along the way, but as I was teaching them, I realized like, oh, this isn't exactly what I thought they need or, oh, we need to spend more time on that. And so I spent that time in the cabin focusing on what the course, you know, and the program should be, but also understanding that 
I now wanted to be a coach, that this was now something that I wanted to do at least part-time at the time. Now it's a full-time thing. And so it turns out I wasn't very good at reintegrating my old self into my new self. And I don't know what I was thinking that I could go back to my old job with this new perspective that I had on life. It didn't work. I went back for about two, three months and within a month I knew this wasn't going to work. So I resigned and decided I'm just gonna do the coaching thing. And if we run out of money, you know, Nicole has said she will sleep with me under a bridge if that's what it comes to. But I don't think it'll come to that. I think that when you finally see the version of yourself you're supposed to be, you don't have a choice but to lean into that. It's so important to understand who you were always meant to be, who you were meant to become. And when you do see that, when you see that glimpse of yourself, when you see that version of yourself, you need to lean into that. Because if you ignore it, you'll be miserable. And that's what happened when I was integrating myself, when I was trying to figure out how this new version of myself who was, you know, way more spiritual, but also more of a coach and wanting to work on things that matter, like people's lives, instead of just selling boxes. So I really couldn't figure out how to integrate who I am into that older version of myself. So this time I'm going to a cabin, not trying to integrate myself. I'm going to the cabin to learn how to better fully express who I really am. And that's the purpose of this book, is to say what I need to say in writing. And it's not easy, very difficult thing to do. If writing a book was easy, I guess more people would do it. It seems easy. I will say that I thought this would be easier than it's turning out to be. And I think that I have to learn the discipline to just get it written down and get it done. And as opposed to trying to write the perfect words the first time. And I think good enough is good enough when it comes to writing a book. That's what I'm learning right now. I thought I could just write my best work and, you know, like a college paper, you know, I've written 30 page essays, you know, several times easily enough. This is not a 30 page essay. So I'm learning a lot about that in this trip to the cabin. So I, I find these times alone, you know, to be introspective, to work on the important things, to kind of flesh out who I am and who I want to be and what's important to me. I find these to be really valuable and I'm thinking I don't do these enough. This is the first time in a year I've done this and I probably need to do this more often. So I encourage you to think about how you can get away for a day or two or three or seven or more on a semi-silent retreat. Basically disconnect yourself from all of the typical bells and whistles and dive into what's important to you for a while. I think that we can all do that a little bit more. And I think that the best executives learn how to stay focused on what's important versus what's urgent. Good morning. It is Tuesday, so my second day here, but my first full day. So today we're gonna get some work done over there. That's where I'll be most of today and all week. Thought I'd bring a little bit of inspiration juice with me on this trip. Uh, a little bit of a splurge, but I think it'll help you wind down in the evenings. It is absolutely beautiful here today. 
I am up in Ellijay, North Georgia. It's a small town. I'm up on a mountainside looking down at a really cool river behind me. And I just needed some time away from work, from the family. Love my family, love my job. But I just needed some time away to get focused on this project that I've been kind of wanting to work on for a while now. At the beginning of the year, I came up with an idea that I wanted to write a book. And in the book, I would write basically the entire process start to finish of going from mid-career professional to executive. And this is what I teach in my executive career accelerator program. But I wanted to write a book. And there's a couple of reasons that I wanted to write this book. One is that I think books are an underrated medium. The people who can actually sit down and read a book, they're fewer and farther between than there used to be when books were the only medium. But now we're competing with TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and social media of other kinds. You know, books don't get as much publicity as they used to. But people who do read books and take away the information and the knowledge from those books tend to be high performers. And that's my audience. My target demographic is people who want to change their careers and their lives for the better. So I think what better way to reach business minded people than business books. I trade in business books all day long, every day, like, hey, I got a book for this, I got a book for that, but I don't have my own book. And it's a little funny because I, I never thought of myself as actually being qualified to write a book. But when you take a step back and think about that, it's kind of a silly thing to say. Like anyone can write a book, anyone can write a book. It's not impossible to do. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. And so I decided, you know what, that is now a bucket list item for me. I want to have published a book that I think would be super helpful. And that's the other thing is that I don't want to write an autobiography or anything like that. It's more about like a how to manual step by step. Here are the things that you have to do. You know, I've been teaching this stuff on video for the past year because I'm not even sure why. I guess that was just, you know, what was the easiest way for me to get my message out was just make one minute reels and post them and then make YouTube videos and post those. But I think that the time that it takes to write this book, you know, has helped me really like crystallize exactly this process. And so that's one of the hidden benefits of writing this book. And this is the second reason why I wanted to write this book is because I, I think that writing this book gives me clarity on the program, on exactly the step-by-step -step processes. And in reviewing all of the case studies, we have 50 people in the program as of today and reviewing all of the case studies, of everyone who's gone through this program, I've learned so much about how to teach things, what to teach in what order. Spoiler alert, one of the things that I've learned here is that some things need to be done simultaneously, not in serial. And so parallel learning is going to be a new part of our program going forward. And I'm exploring that here in this book. So a couple good reasons to write this book. And then finally, this is a book that I wish that I had been able to pick up when I was younger, earlier in my executive career. I was an idiot. Gosh, thinking back to like 2009, 2010, when I started running a company with, I think we had like 10 or 11 employees by 2011 and then we had 35 or 40 employees by 2012 and man i was not qualified to be their leader i was a really good sales guy and a product guy but i wasn't a leader in the way that i can lead people now and i wish that i had this book to teach me some things that i could have done better and that's the third reason i wanted to write this book was because i think you know i'm writing a book to my earlier version of myself and i think that's really the best audience to ever really communicate with is an earlier version of you so many of you are probably in exactly the same place that I was in that point in my career, where up until then, my career had been this meteoric rise, high performer, always best at what I did. And but at the same time, couldn't seem to figure out what it took to move to the executive ranks and got an MBA. I was halfway through the MBA. I started this company. I'm like, well, I think I've learned enough from this MBA to be an executive. And that MBA didn't prepare me at all for the things that I wound up experiencing as an executive of this startup company and some humbling lessons that I went through in that experience, which, you know, I'm grateful for, but I sure would have loved to have an advisor or a mentor kind of pull me aside and say, hey, try this, not that. And of course, I asked the question, you know, would I even be willing to listen to that advice back then? I'm not sure. So those are the reasons why I wanted to write this book. I started the book concept around the beginning of the year. So around January 1st, I said, OK, I'm going to start a 90 day sprint and I'm going to publish in April. And that's still my goal. We'll see. But I think one of the challenges that I have that we all have in doing great big things is that our day to day lives get in the way of actually being able to accomplish those great big things. And this has been very true with this book. The month of January, I wrote zero pages of this book. And I realized that I wasn't going to get any pages written until I finished an outline. And every time I sat down to think about the outline, the problem was that the outline is so big that it takes me hours and 
hours to kind of put it all into my head and think about it all at the same time. And I wasn't able to do that. My content creation time is really from like 9 a.m. until noon. And even that is cut up with occasional meetings and interruptions from the team and from clients, which, you know, I'm happy to work with them, but I can't get singularly focused on something with all of that distraction. So I figured pretty quickly, like, okay, I need to do something to disconnect myself from the day to day. So I came out to this place. This place is gorgeous. This is a cabin owned by a friend of mine and I still paid retail for it, but it's a, an amazing spot out here. Just looking down at this river going by and super quiet, gravel dirt road to get here and nobody goes by. So super quiet. And I've been here alone. This is Thursday. So this is my fourth day here alone and it's been great. I'm a little lonely, but at the same time, like I have had nothing to do but write this book. And, and that's been a great thing for me. I did finish the outline. That was exciting. I'm into writing some of the chapters now. I'm adding more detail and depth to the outline as well as we go. So coming on here was a good idea for me to at least get the outline written. Once I have the outline done, now I can focus on individual parts of the book. But I found that thinking holistically about the entirety of a book, really, I needed time to just sit with that for days on end. And that's what it took. It took three days to write the outline. So now it's today's day four. And what I'm doing today is the outline is as complete as I need it to be right now. And now I can go into individual chapters. So I'm writing individual chapters of the book. So I guess the lesson here is is that if you're interested in writing a book, I strongly encourage you to take the time to think about what you want this book to be, what you want it to say, and then map that out in an outline. And once you have that outline, then you can write the individual pieces of the book as if they're blog articles or other more bite-sized pieces of content. But you have to come up with this thread, this high-level outline that you know gives structure and reason for all of the things that go into the book. Because if you think about the journey through a book, especially like a, a nonfiction business book, you know, what I'm trying to do is to tell people, here is a way for you to go from mid-career professional to executive. I want you to believe me and here's proof and here's examples and here's mindset shifts you haven't had and now here's the framework and let's get into the details and then here's the first thing that you need to know how to do go do that and so that's kind of the outline of my book and I don't think I would have been able to put all that together just an hour or two at a time a couple days a week you know here and there so I think really like laying it all out and just being very holistic minded about what I'm trying to accomplish that really helped me out so I will tell you that if you're writing a book the outline the outline the outline is the most important part from my perspective of the entire process so now I'm excited because I think that over the next I guess two more months I should get a lot of content written I'm hoping to have a draft done in less than a month and take that through editing and then final editing and more editing and final final last final seven editing my goal is to have a book ready by april 1st and before this week i didn't think i was going to hit that date and then after this week i feel a little bit better about that so here's to you know sticking to our goals and here's to the ability to take a week not everybody has that i'm very blessed to be able to do this and even if you can't get away for seven days or something like that taking two or three days and holding yourself up somewhere in another part of the house or in a hotel room even you know for two days is a great way to just kind of remove all of the distractions of our day-to-day -day lives and focus solely on one thing. And in doing so, you'll understand at a high level what it is you're trying to accomplish. And if you build an outline from there, each individual part can be built separately over time. So that's my plan. That's what this trip was about. I'm excited. I never thought that I'd be able to publish a book. I don't know why. It just didn't seem like it was in the realm of something that I was allowed to do. And it's a limiting mindset that I have. And these limiting mindsets, you know, they affect us all. They the people that I work with have limiting mindsets about maybe I never thought that I could be a vice president. I never thought that I could be the CEO. It never occurred to me that I'd be good enough to do that kind of job. And from me watching them from the outside, it's like, oh, you're an amazing executive. You just don't realize it yet. I don't know if I'm an amazing writer, but I am a writer. And I think that that's good enough for me. To be honest with you, it really makes me happy to be able to, to work on this. So it's a bit of a passion project, but oh my goodness, how helpful will this book be when it's done? Like how many people 
pick up this book, read it, and then go and launch their executive careers from this book. The thought of that really excites me. And then the thought of, you know, I have five or six other books in my mind as well after that one. So once I get good at this, maybe I'll be able to write some others as well. And that opens a whole new career path for me as well. So yeah, come a long way, come a long way since I started this a little over a year ago and really happy with where things are right now. So I guess that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video.